Hi, my name is Barb Sackle. Today's video is made possible by QuiltWoman.com. The title of today's video is Learning Sewing Machine Basics. And I have a brand new quilter sitting with me here today, Savannah. <laughs> I'm going to go over the sewing machine with her and she's here to ask plenty of questions. So hopefully we will take the intimidation out of the sewing machine and open up a whole new world to you. The first thing I want to talk about is when you have your basic sewing machine, well of course you need your thread. I've set out some thread here and what you'll notice is all this thread is neutral based. So what kind of thread that you use, it might be cotton and it might be a mixture of poly cotton. Anything is okay, whatever you like, um, but try to keep it in the neutral area. A stark white or black, ooh, it's just a little bit shows up too much if your seam split. So keep it neutral. The next thing you will need to learn is when we go ahead and thread the machine, there's a couple items that you can use. You can use this thread holder up here, this thread holder. If you have a big spool like this, you can use a thread holder like this. Or what I do is I tape a little sewing pin on the back of my machine and I'm showing you a picture of it and I just insert the thread right through that and it keeps it simple. Here's a basic sewing machine set up for you in front of us. And most basic sewing machines are identical in that they all have a top thread and they all have a thread from the bottom that goes through your bobbin. So we are going to thread the machine on top and on bottom and set it up for basic sewing. We're going to do that in just a second. The machines come with a bunch of feet. Now here is your standard foot. If you do a lot of quilting, then you would have a quarter inch foot. But when we do a quarter inch on here, refer to my video, the perfect quarter inch seam allowance, because that will set you up to do the perfect seam. Um, so the foot, if you use that technique, doesn't really matter. So you can get away with your basic foot. The second foot that you need is the walking foot. And the walking foot actually walks. So this will, it kind of just goes up and down and walks. So where this foot kind of pushes your fabric, and if it's too bulky, it'll you'll have these little lumps and bumps and probably just a couple darts. So when you have a lot of fabric layers, for example, then you want to use your walking sheet and walking foot and it goes over it and doesn't push your fabric. So if you can afford a walking foot, then by all means have one because it's something that you'll get a lot of use out of. So we're going to just put the foot, uh, and the Bernina that I'm showing has an easy way to add feet. You just put the foot on the little piece of metal down there and you just clamp it on and your foot is on. But every machine is different as far as how to put your feet on. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is put your foot on and have that ready. Now your thread, remember I told you it can go on this spool, it can go on this spool. If you decide to put it on this spool, this little item here fits on there and tightens the thread so it doesn't, you know, whip off Yeah, as you're doing this. So we can do this. And now for threading, again, every machine is different. but to thread a machine is usually the same and there's not a lot to it. What I do is I take off, you can see that I took off a bunch of thread and I do hold my hand here to give a little tension. Okay. Now, the wheel, you're going to use the hand wheel over here and this is really the only time I use it, otherwise you never touch it. Okay. And if you can peek in here, you see that the arm is in the tippy top position. You need that arm in the tippy top position to thread, and that's standard. So I'm going to give myself a little, hold it over here so that my machine is a little bit taut, and I'm going to go in the back here, and then I'm just going to go down one side of this and up the other, and it falls into that little arm automatically. So there's nothing that you do. So you always have to. You, usually there's some kind of thread holder back here and then you have to come around 
and up and it falls right into that little arm and that's your basic piece of machinery that you need. Once your thread is there, then you just bring your thread down your guide holder and there's usually two tiny little holders. And there's one holder here and there's one little holder here. And every machine will have your two little holders somewhere in that vicinity. And after that is done, then you plain go through the needle of the eye. Okay. And the top is top is threaded. Okay, so I'm going to some um, threads or some machines, sorry, have needle threaders, which is really nice. And this one doesn't, so I'm just going to thread that through. And I'm not seeing because I don't have my glasses on. I'm not seeing that, so I will do that in a second. So now we're going to worry about the bottom thread because the threads work together. The top and the bottom come together and they interloop yep. and that's how your fabric stays together. In this particular machine, I'm going to take off my plate so that I have access to the door. You're going to open the door and you're going to pull. There's a little lever on your bobbin holder. Open up your little lever and you pull out your bobbin and that's going to fall right out. So now the bobbin needs to go in here, but uh oh, we don't have any thread. Guess what we're going to do? Thread the bobbin. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. We're going to thread the bobbin. So, but you've seen that I've already have my top threaded. So now, if I want to thread the bobbin, I have to unthread everything or use a second spool here. Okay. And not redo it. So if I'm in the middle of a sewing project and my bobbin runs out, oh, I don't want to undo it and then do it back up. So I just generally keep a second uh, spool somewhere on my machine. Doesn't have to be the same color, though. No. No. As long as it's neutral. Okay. Um, I don't ever worry about it. In fact, what I do is I will take something like this and I will wind seven, eight, ten bobbins and have my bobbins ready. Okay. And then if I change this color, I don't really worry about it. Okay, so this, when it comes off the spool to go to the bobbin winder, there's a little holder here. So you have to put the thread in that holder. And then every machine is the same with this. It has a tension guide. So it puts tension on this so that when this wind is not all, you know, like a wet noodle. You need that tension to get a nice bobbin. Okay, so now I'm going to... Some people put your bobbin on, and, and then they do it six or seven, eight times, and then they go ahead and wind it. Um, I do a different little trick, and you can, you can do whatever's comfortable for you. I kind of insert the thread through the top of the bottom, the bobbin, and I hold it for a few twirls of the bobbin and then I cut it off. Okay. And then I don't have this little thread in there playing havoc later on. So once, now I'm ready, you can see that's nice, has a nice tension on it. And all you do is close that bar. And let's open it. Sometimes, on some machines, you will close that bar and use the foot pedal. So either way, you have to close that. And when this little bar is closed to the bobbin, the needle will not work. Okay. So if you're sitting there, you get to class, and you can't get your needle to work, check and see if this was pushed in in your travels. Okay. And because that will stop your whole machine, and so make sure that that's in the out position when you're ready to sew. So let's wind that bobbin. And you can see that the thread is going up and down and it's doing its own business. And it'll stop automatically. That's my next question. Yeah. Now my bobbin's nice and full. I just nip that. Pull it off. It's a real, it just sits on, pulls off. And I'm just going to leave that thread there, not even worry about it. For my next bobbin, everything is all set up. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to take my bobbin, and it has to go back into my bobbin holder. And it, again, just slips in and out. However, most sewing machines work 
clockwise. But you have to check your sewing machine to see if this is true because there are sewing machines that work opposite. So check your instruction manual. This particular machine always works clockwise. In other words, if I pull this down, it rotates like a clock. Okay. So I'm going to put it in, and then again I can pull it down to see if it rotates like a clock. It is. And then I'm going to pull this thread up so it goes in that little slit and finally over to this little hole. And it, it's going to snap into place. So once you do that, it's ready to go. So now I'm going to open my little door. And opening this little hinge here allows it to grab inside. So I'm going to open the little door and put it in, close the little door, and it's locked in place. And then most machines have a little thread cutter here. I didn't know this for about 10 years. <laughs> so <laughs> it was such a big discovery to me. I always had this long piece of thread. So just take it and you can just cut your little thread. Okay. Okay. Shut your door. And let's put our base plate back on. You don't have to use a plate too, right? You don't have to use a plate. The one time that you wouldn't want to use a plate is if you're doing a sleeve. Say you were doing garment sewing and you just wanted to put a sleeve around that little neck. Mm -hmm or um, pillow, or there's different things, pillowcase, like anything circular yeah. that you want to keep going, then you would take this plate off. Almost everything in quilting you would use the plate because your hands usually set on it and you can guide it. So okay. the, the plate is really, really nice for quilting. Okay, so now we have our bobbin done. We have the top of our machine done. And that is the hardest part. Oh, good to know. <laughs> yes. It, it, from there on in, uh, there's not much to it. So when you buy a sewing machine, or if you receive a sewing machine, or you borrow a sewing machine, depending on what you have, you can have stitches, and you can have stitches, and stitches, and stitches. But you don't use them for quilting unless you do things like this. Now this one, when I quilted the three layers together, you can see I used a decorative stitch just for quilting purposes that added interest. Okay. Another reason you'd want to use a decorative stitch is when you do applique. And when applique, you always have to secure your edges. And again, I used another stitch to secure my edges. Other than those two reasons, for the most part, there's always exceptions, but other than those two reasons, you will just use a straight stitch. Okay. Which means there's nothing to touch here. Your straight stitch it's is... It's automatically does it. Yeah. It's always your default. Okay. So your straight stitch is there. You don't move your needle. You don't do nothing. Once you're threaded, you are ready to go. Okay. No intimidation anywhere else. Now what happens if you're sewing and let's just say the tension goes slack? Like, like, um, would you just stop and just fix that, I guess? Yes. A lot of machines... This one has, this is computerized, Okay. so you would go to the screen and uh, consult your manual. And But a lot of machi machines also have a little tension dial here, Yeah. and you would mess with that a little bit. Until it works. Yeah, until it works. And you would do a practice. Do okay. a practice stitch, go through, see if the top stitch is even with the bottom stitch, and if it is, you are ready to go. Okay. If the stitch isn't even, if one is pulled higher or lower, then do a little dial on your stitch until you get that good tension, because that's really important okay. in your quilting. So at this point, we are ready to stitch. Now, there is one button that you're going to use, and that's your reverse. Okay. So wherever your reverse, my reverse button is down here. Um, some machines have buttons over here. There, your reverse button can be anywhere you want. When you sew, you always do a straight stitch and you never reverse. Okay. Unless the instructions tell you to reverse. So you will use the reverse button once in a blue moon. And this is why we don't use our back stitch. We have two pieces of fabric and we usually put them right sides together and you start your straight stitch in your quarter inch and you just go to town with it. Then you would iron this open and you would put your second piece of fabric over that and do your quarter inch and that locks that in. 
So if you've done garment sewing or regular sewing, you always feel like you should backstitch everything, mm -hmm. which means go in reverse. But you don't do that with quilting unless the instructions tell you to. Okay. Okay, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about, and that is how to clean your machine. Because when you're working with thread, all the tiny little pieces of thread cause a lot of dust. And the dust goes down into the area here where your feed dogs are. And if you open up your door, you'll see that this often gets very full of lint. And so you want to take a brush and clean that out. Take out your bobbin case and take a brush and clean that out. And here's where the big surprise is. This is your plate. And every machine is different, but this plate comes off easily so that you can get the lint out of there. You get too much lint and it takes your feed dogs, you know, restricts them a little bit. So with this particular machine, you push this back button and it just lifts right off. And you'll notice, you see the lint in there? Well, I'm going to take my brush and you can just see what I just pulled off. And it doesn't, you can clean this out almost after a couple of bobbins. You'll see that that much lint gets put in there. And I just get in there and just kind of dust it. So not only do you want to clean the lint out of your machine, but you need to oil it. And you usually oil only in one place on most machines, okay. but check your manual to be sure. But the one place you need to oil is right in there in your bobbin case because of the metal, rubbing against the metal. Mm -hmm. And that's the only place. So you would take your oil and you just put one drop there and that's it. You're done. Your machine is taken care of. Then you put your bobbin case back in its little place, you know, do your thread, so on and so on, and do that. Okay, Savannah, so go ahead and put the plate back in. That is great. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the thread now. Okay, so um, where does this belong? Like, where should it be while you're sewing? All right, when it comes out of the needle, you'll notice on this foot it, there's a little slit there. And we can put the thread through that and then pull it to the back. If your foot doesn't have that slit, just go underneath and pull your thread to the back. Now before we start sewing, we need to bring the bobbin thread up. Mm -hmm. And I hold on to this and I turn my wheel so that my needle goes down once and up. And as soon as I bring it up, I can give that little tug I'm just going to use my seam ripper and you'll see. There it is. And I'm going to pull it. And now I'm going to pull both of these to the back and I'm ready to start sewing. Do you just hold on to them? Sometimes. Sometimes it uh, depends on your machine. Sometimes your machine will gobble them down in there. Okay. So you're either going to hold on to them or you're going to start a starter piece of fabric sew on that starter and then go from there. Okay. So depending on your machine. And that's a good question because that's another problem that people have. So the way to solve that, hold your threads or have a starter piece of fabric. Okay. Okay, so how are we feeling so far? Pretty good. I, I think I have um, a little less fear than I did before, mm -hmm. knowing that it's, it's really not that, that huge of a deal. You just kind of work on your thread and get everything started and just go. Right, right. And all these buttons and little fussy things, they'll just come with time. Don't feel as though you have to know your whole machine right on day one. Just give yourself that little extra room for your learning curve. Now, when you go to class, there are times that your machine is going to say, I don't really feel like working good for you today. So the, the machine gives you problems. So we have some fixes that work 90% of the time. So the number one thing to remember is when your machine is threaded with your top thread and you want to change color, mm -hmm. you never, never, never pull the thread backwards through the machine. Okay. That can mess things up. So what you're going to do is cut it up here and yet you can pull it. Pull down? Pull down. Okay. Okay. So, you know, if you go up here to pull backwards, give yourself a little <laughs> flap there and say, oh yeah, I can't do that. So that's the number one thing you want to remember. The number two thing you want to remember is if this is 
chugging along and it's making sounds that you know shouldn't be there, the, you're going to do two things to fix that. And that is you're going to re-thread the top of the machine and you're going to re-thread the bobbin. 90% of the time that takes care of things because when you thre re or thread it the first time you probably missed something. So always remember if you hear sound or something, just re-thread top and bottom. It's mm -hmm. going to take care of almost everything. The next thing is if you have a computerized machine and it starts acting up, you're going to unplug it and let it reboot. Okay. And then that way, that's going to take care of a lot of problems for you. So those are the only fixes that you have to remember is basically re-thread, turn off, or unplug. Okay. And that's going to get you through almost every problem that you have. So are you ready to start quilting? I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope you mm -hmm. enjoy your journey. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and if you like some of the quilts you've seen today, please look for the pattern at quiltwoman.com.